In this video, I'll be talking about the Maskit Basket Suture. And this is named after Dr. Samuel Maskit, and he came up with this technique in regards to stabilization of a dislocated IOL, specifically in scenarios of post vitrectomized eyes. So this would be the typical scenario. So here is an eye, and you've got, let's say, a dislocated um, one piece, or sorry, three piece IOL. Um, so one of the concerns is, is that once you start operating, this lens may um, displace posteriorly, especially if it's a post vitrectomized eye. When you have vitreous, the vitreous acts as a cushion. And so if you have a dislocated eye, well, in the presence of a non-vitrectomized eye, the, the lens, the dislocated lens tends to be a bit more stable. But in scenarios where vitrectomy has already been done, these lenses don't really have much back support. And there's a concern for both either the anterior segment surgeon or for the retina surgeon that the lens may uh, fall to the back during intraocular maneuvers. So the Samuel Maskett suture uh, employs the use of uh, proline, uh, typically tetoproline. Um, and so what you're going to use is you're going to make uh, sclerotomies. Typically, now you can orient them uh, in this direction or in this direction here. So if this is the limbus, we're going to go typically about two millimeters from the limbus, and then we'll say about three to four millimeters across. And then we do the same thing on the other side. So two millimeters and about three to four millimeters across. We're going to open a tenoproline. Now you can use a CIF4 needle um, and there's other uh, alternatives to use. Now the needle is curved and it's often, or it is, I should say, it's double-armed. And what you're also going to open up is a 27-gauge hypodermic needle. Hypodermic needle. And you're going to need two of those. And what you're simply going to do is you're going to pass this needle. Um, you're going to basically pierce. So you're going to mark these areas, and then you're going to pierce and enter the anterior segment with this needle. So it'll come out through here. So here's the actual needle. This is the suture. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pass the 27 gauge needle across And then what you're going to do is you're going to pass the needle into the lumen of the 27 gauge needle, and then you're going to externalize it. So what is that going to, what does that look like? So let's erase a few things here. So what that's what, and then you're basically going to pull the 27 gauge needle out. Once you've uh, put the suture through the lumen. And so now you're going to have this straight line And it's going to exit out through here. And here's the needle that we used initially. Okay. You're going to repeat the same thing. Remember, this is a double arm. So, so we're going to now grab the other needle. Because, again, it's double armed. Okay. So here it is right there. We're going to pass it through here. And then we're going to feed the needle into another 27 gauge hypodermic needle. So, so what's that going to look like? Well, just like what we just did. So it's double armed, so it's going to pass through here. And here comes the needle. And you're going to pass the 27 gauge uh, needle. And this, this will be uh, under the optic, so I'm going to use uh, 
dotted lines to indicate that it's under. And then we're gonna feed the needle, the needle itself into the lumen of the 27 gauge needle. Once it's in, we're going to pull the 27 gauge needle out. And so that will look something like this. Just gonna erase. Okay, so we're going to pass. And again, I'm gonna mark it as dotted to indicate underneath. And then here's the second needle. Okay. What we're going to do next is we're going to pull on each needle so that um, this, uh, go, you know, the, 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 there's a bit more tension here. So as we pull, we're going to get a suture, and that looks like this. And at this point, you can cut the needles. You're left with the two suture strands. Then you can tie it however way you want, 311. And then you're going to be left with a closed end like that. Now, this, these suture lines will act like a backboard. That way you can mobilize the IOL with your micro instrumentation. And these, this suture, these uh, suture uh, uh, lines will prevent the IOL from falling backwards. Now, you could also, and often this is more than enough, um, you can actually repeat the same thing on the other side. So again, two millimeters from the limbus. And... Um, three millimeters across, and you can do the same exact thing I just showed you with the, ne with the needle and uh, with the 27 uh, gauge hypodermic uh, needle. So what you get is, and again, the dotted line will indicate that uh, it's underneath and you'll be left with sutures like that. And so now you've got a real backboard, you've got great support. Um, and so basically, this is a nice technique to have. Um, I think it's, it's, it's particularly useful in post vitrectomized eyes. Um, I think it's a great technique to have for surgeons who want to learn how to manage dislocated IOLs. Uh, you know, their first few cases, they want to have that sense of security that the IOL will not... Uh, uh, prolapse backwards. But often with experience, you really don't need to uh, employ this particular technique. Um, but again, it's, it's a nice training wheel type uh, uh, method uh, for dislocated lenses. Now, what are some important points? You have to be very careful uh, 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 when you're passing needles uh, in, in these regions here because you may cause a vitreous hemorrhage. Um, so make sure uh, that your angulations are appropriate. Um, and anyways, that basically summarizes the video of the masked basket suture. I hope you found this to be useful and thanks for your attention.